this is Heather Luna, and welcome to K Doozy Cast, where we talk about all the things standing in the way of us learning how to take care of one another and keep each other as safe as possible, particularly within the kind of collapse driven communities that many Western white middle class people find themselves in. Not everyone, of course, but those are the kinds of things we talk about here. And you can find me at kdoozy.org as well as on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I've got some occasional videos on YouTube and some Twitch. So, welcome to this episode of K Doozy Cast. Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about collapse. I've just read this great paper from a few years back by Kyle White and it's um, about indigenous science fiction. And he's talking about a different way of looking at collapse. A lot of people I know think about collapse as something that's going to happen in the future and that's bringing a lot of anxiety. And we forget or have never been aware that for some people, collapse already happened. If you imagine that we have our way of life, um, we, we start our day with checking social media, we look at Facebook, we look at Twitter, we do our daily wordle, quartal, octordal, and we have coffee and we have particular kinds of food and we have particular people and ways that we interact with them, be it through work or online. And we go to restaurants and we go to cafes and all of this is our particular way of life. It's what we know. It's what we expect. And we're worrying about losing it. Because of climate and ecological destruction, uh, more pandemics, all kinds of things could change this way of life. Now, imagine indigenous peoples who had a particular way of life they had a cycle in their lives. Every morning they woke up and they expected life to be a particular way and their interactions with other people and with the natural environment, the language they used, the clothes they wore, how they ate together, how they spent their time. They expected it to continue in that way in some manner and then colonization happened and it just ripped all that completely apart this happened in many different ways over lots of time but what they expected to happen in the mornings how they ate who they were with what they did was completely destroyed. It was a collapse scenario. For them, collapse already happened. And you can also imagine that if you were part of that culture and then you had a completely different uh, experience reality because of colonization and you were to see the future 
and you would see your family, your descendants living a completely different way of life. No longer was it something like a connection with nature, being outdoors a lot, being around people, using your hands. You know, I'm stereotyping what we would expect, but the point remains the same. That imagining that you could see the future from that time and see that your people would be indoors on computers no longer having a connection with land with food um, just on phones on screens feeling isolated feeling disconnected that would look like a dystopia when we talk about collapse I think it's important that we listen to what authors like Kyle White are saying about collapse that has already happened is still happening there's a kind of collapse happening for people in Ukraine Yemen Syria where they had a particular way of life every day that they expected and that just changed. It happens to be what we experience when we get completely displaced for flooding from wildfires. It might be that we can recreate some of that life and then it's not actually collapse in that way. Because for our ancestors and for indigenous people, you know, and, and I mean, if, if I'm, I do have indigenous heritage, my father's Colombian mestizo, so we have indigenous and Spanish heritage. And on my mom's side, white colonizer, 1600s from England to what is now the United States. If we go back far enough into her heritage, there was a collapse of the way that they lived completely in a way that was hurtful and that damaged our sense of connection with other people. So I encourage you to find this article because it, it gives us a different way of looking at collapse. And another interesting aspect to it is that part of the dystopia would be for indigenous people that he is describing here is that they expected a kind of agency over their human affairs and a fluidity over roles and how people lived throughout the year in different ways. And so for them to see the future where there is so little human agency, so little fluidity, so much patriarchy, sexism, would be very dystopic for them as well to see. The article that he wrote also discusses what it means to be an ally and that a lot of people want to be allies to indigenous peoples, but 
end up not being willing to fight the everyday colonialism that still happens. the legal, cultural, educational, economic conditions, he, he writes, that make it possible for this to have happened in the first place. That we as allies are not actually doing anything to change that. And that those of us who are looking for green solutions need to recognize that The fossil fuel industries, the kind of injustice that they have perpetuated, a lot of the solutions that we look at are not that different. They still mean destroying land, ecosystems, taking away livelihoods. And it's important that we Kind of allow ourselves to feel this discomfort around this perspective that's that makes us look at collapse as something in the future and that leads us to looking for solutions that aren't actually good for everyone so thanks so much for listening to this episode of k doozy cast this has been Heather Luna, and if you are able to make any sort of donation to help us out here in Colombia, every little bit goes a long way. So um, you can make a donation through the website, kdoozy.org, or you can do it through PayPal. And the username for PayPal is HeatherLuna1, and that's the number one. Otherwise, do go to kdoozy.org to see what upcoming workshops we've got and look for us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Medium, LinkedIn, Twitch, YouTube. Until next time, ciao!